Hi guys, my name is Alex Federet. I'm a my name is Alex Federet. I'm a dentist and the founder of the educational company Dentalix. We came to the first place in the Europe, to the Cabo de Roca, the place Cape of the Rock, in Portugal. My YouTube blog is about taking interviews and showing you how the famous dentists, how the famous dental speakers are living to show their clinics, their life, their experience and to share with you. In this video we're gonna meet a wonderful, interesting dental speaker, dentist, surgeon and implantologist Paulo Carvalho who lives in Porto. In this episode, I asked Dr. Carvalho to share with us a bit of his concept and style regarding mucogingival surgery and aesthetic rehabilitation. So at the end of this video, he'll share with us a short part of his lecture with detailed comments. Focus and enjoy it! Oh, hi guys, we're here with Paulo Carvalho in his clinic in Portugal. Hello. Hi. Hi, hi. cool. Man, I'm super happy you gave me a chance to visit Porto in such a wonderful time, actually in January, in when it's super cold in Ukraine, in Europe. Uh, mainly, well, I have not much information about you or knowledge, so literally so many people following you on Instagram, seeing your wonderful pictures, tremendous uh, like things you're doing and stuff. Uh, a good question I wanted to ask, uh, clinic where we are here, it's in the shopping mall. Mm -hmm. It's not normal no. for, us, for me actually. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. Our, our kind of, how, how does it, first, why? Mm -hmm. Why did you choose the location? And second, how does it work? in Europe um, in terms of um, allowance? No, uh, it's a long story. Uh, when um, when uh, th in, in Portugal is very normal. It's not normal, but it, th there is a lot of clinics that are in, inside shopping malls. You know what I saw in Lisbon? I, w I was in Lisbon a couple of years ago. I went to the metro station. In the metro station, literally, a before clinic? getting on the, before getting underground, okay, okay. the first Part you uh -huh. go upstairs down, there was a clinic. Really? Dental clinic. Mm -hmm. The first area dental no, clinic. I don't know. That's I was I was shocked. Uh, I don't know. That's what, that's what no, inside the shopping mall is is not new. It's that it, there are in a lot of shopping malls, but usually it's um, it's like a network of clinics, big enterprises, not a familiar clinic like mine. When uh, there's a story behind it, this clinic originally has more than 50 years old. You mean Five this zero. place or no, the Not this place, no, name. the clinic, the, the name. The the name. I, I worked with the, the previous owner, so I started 11 years ago, I worked with him for two years, uh, but he was a very old dentist, mm -hmm. he was retiring, and he wanted me to, uh, to buy the clinic and stay with the clinic. I couldn't do it at the beginning because I was too young, too inexperienced, without any money. And then one of, um, one of, um, uh, of my bosses at another clinic, he's my business partner, he's not a dentist. Um, we, we created a, a brand, an enterprise, and we took over the cl this clinic. We took over this clinic at another location. It was mm -hmm. the original location. It was in a, uh, in, uh, uh, very close here, which is in Rua Santa Catarina. That's why the name mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is the name of the of the um, uh, of the place. Mm -hmm. But um, then we had a we had a problem that came from the previous owner. We didn't know about that. We needed to get out of the place, 
of that location very quickly and we had no not not much options by that time so by that time i th i thought it was the end of my life i was without any support of no one mm -hmm. all the money i had invested was a long story and um, we were running out of time because we needed to change location because of that problem that was from the previous owner and um, one of the places that that came was inside the shopping mall because this is a very small shopping mall it's a shopping mall of services it's not exactly where uh -huh. people go to buy clothes and you know beauty and aesthetics it's more of uh, services and something more intimate more familiar and uh, but yeah at the beginning we were like oh inside the shopping mall no because we, it will create the wrong idea the wrong concept but uh, as the time was rushing uh, we, we had no other options and then we invested here and actually it was the best thing that could happen for us at, by that I time see. because we came for uh, to another part of the town this is downtown mm -hmm. where everything happens and suddenly the um, we ha we had the triple of the work without doing anything and uh, and things were, were were good things were good and now like i told you we are changing location yeah. <laughs> again so literally can six do, months. can open kind of a medical business in uh, public place uh yeah in in public places in yeah of course you have certain rules that you need to follow uh and for example emergency exits all those things as you are inserted inside the shopping mall you have different uh different rules that's cool yeah but you can do it yeah could you show us uh, apart from the dental clinic tour, mm -hmm. how the first appointment of the patient happens? Okay. Literally, like how it comes, how it yeah, goes. Yeah, okay. We can, can, can do it now. Yeah, yeah. Cool. okay. Let's go. During the tour? Yeah. Okay. patients reach to my clinic this is their entry point this is the reception we we invested in a beautiful receptionist as you can see five years for that <laughs> this is our uh, waiting room full of lights trying to get people comfortable over here and so after the admission and all the registration part at the reception uh, we go to the ortho okay ortho pantomography this is entering already the clinical part of the clinic and our ct scan is located here where in the first visit we do the ortho pantomography and then if needed we do the ct scan as well So then after uh, the x-ray, uh, uh, patients wait again in the waiting room and then they can, be, uh, they can go for the different clinical offices. We have five clinical offices. This is working at the moment, I guess. So this is my office. This is the office I usually work. Um, if I'm doing surgeries for sure I'm doing in this office sometimes for normal appointments uh, it can be done in other offices so where I have my surgical light all the setup for video uh, if I want to record the surgery uh, so this is the sterilization room which is linking uh, um, three different offices we will see the other right away uh, when we have the need to uh, all the photo documentation for aesthetic work we go to the mm -hmm. uh, studio what's that uh, this is for uh, this is for cleaning the air because of covid so how it works after yeah after uh, all the appointments this is purifying the air uh. sterifying the air i see it's chinese <laughs> 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 so look like you said Everything started from when you got just your graduation surgery area or how everything started and like what my main uh, question, my main interest actually is like how to get on all the steps and to choose the right steps to go to the right mentor, right clinician to observe the right course, correct ones that you 
you're sure that you're gonna learn something new. So it's not like old school or something like that. Yeah. Because there are super nice guys, super nice lecturers, uh, but right now they're considered to be old schools. Yeah. And many new guys are super new, super trendy ones. So how did you choose and how would you literally advise to choose those guys mm -hmm. and to go? Well, I think that um, um, the, every person has its own path. It's going to be different for everyone. But of course, I think that um, especially for the young, for the young doctors, they should understand that uh, dentistry nowadays, it's, it's, it's like I said, multidisciplinary. That means that, okay, you can, you can feel yourself more comfortable in one uh, specialty or another, but you have to understand the patient as a whole. You have to mm -hmm. understand multidisciplinary treatment. Okay, you, we probably don't know how to do auto treatments, the technical part, the step by step, but we know how to diagnose. We know how to plan. We know how, how and where ortho is going to intervene in different multidisciplinary treatments. So uh, one of the main errors for me uh, by the dentists is when they think tooth by tooth and not as a whole uh, set of teeth in a mouth, which is an organ. I always say to my patients that the mouth is an organ, it's not a group of teeth. So when a patient comes to my office and try to uh, explain what he wants teeth by teeth, tooth by tooth, I, I, I have to focus him in which there is a bigger picture. And looking out to our patients has a bigger picture and understand and treat the whole mouth, the whole cavity, the whole person is where we get the best treatments. And also because the market is going that way, we have more and more doctors to the same number of patients. So we are I think that in the future, in modern dentistry, and I think it's the best for all parts involved, is we are going to treat less patients. And so treating less patients, but bigger treatments, the whole mouth. Kind of. So you're going to do more work in less patients, which will deliver best treatments for the patients, uh, much more focus on patients' well, well-being, uh, wellness and um, in health, and, and I think this is the best response. It's better for the doctor because he's, he can really focus on the patient, on the best treatment possible, and it's better for the patient because he's going to receive a much better treatment. Yeah. Uh, mainly in this clinic where you work right now, mm -hmm. uh, your goal is somehow to combine the all possible treatments for the patient, to sell complete treatment plan, mm -hmm. and to treat him fully from A to Z. That's um, how it not not strictly like that, uh, which which is uh, of course we 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 still attend a lot of uh, we still uh, receive a lot of people that came specifically for a problem, uh, and that only do part of the treatment. And if the patient recognizes and uh, it, it is explained to him that he has several problems, he can uh, he can opt to just do one part of the of the the treatment right now and do the rest afterwards only if the doing part of the treatment is a bad job of course we don't do it mm -hmm. but we try to um, uh, uh, teach them that they have to uh, think in overall and have to understand or at least be aware of all the problems so they get out with a, a complete diagnosis, a complete treatment plan, and then the, it's their choices. And uh, yeah, we try to educate people in that way because there's still a, a lot of uh, miseducation on that point for sure. You try to attend every patient who knew coming to you or you have the kind of coordinators or you yeah. talk how to combine each doctor's speciality to get involved and then yeah. to make a full treatment plan. Yeah, it's, um, it's difficult because of course a lot of patients can come from my name, a lot of patients that uh, I'm following from long years and they, it's always a, better, a battle to try to convince them to do, go to other colleagues. Uh, of course my agenda is tight and so a lot of them uh, spontaneously they recognize the need to for simple things to be followed by other doctor. But also because they already understand now that we are a multidisciplinary team. I have a lot of doctors, we are eight doctors at the same time. And um, it's very common nowadays that patients, new patients come and they understand that probably their complex treatment will need to see 
three or four different doctors do, during the treatment and they like that they they like when we uh, get together as a team and they see us two or three doctors at the same time discussing their cases looking at the pictures looking at the x-rays they feel safe because they feel they are being followed by uh, um, uh, um, in a very unique way and so they like that but of course some of the patients um, still want that doctor that name mm -hmm. and uh, they they try to uh, make their way on it but uh, we have to explain them and i still do a lot of like i said at the beginning i still do a lot of general work sometimes i do aesthetic rehabilitations i love doing aesthetic work like veneers i do okay. to do my own mock-ups with composite my and a, a lot of people um, of course, people mostly know me by the surgical uh, mm -hmm. part, but one of the things I like to do the most is to mock ups with composites. I love that part. I love the aesthetics. And it gave me, it's funny because it, it gave me a lot of knowledge to the prosthetics over implants and pontic sites, for example, because you have to really, really, really master anatomy, shape, and then when you master all these. Um, all this part of aesthetic rehabilitations you can fully control your emergence profiles because it's linked together so it gave me a lot of uh, technical uh, abilities to um, in my hands to to work with the prosto and join it with the perio and then i i i trained myself also in some courses to aesthetic rehabilitation and um it's funny because the perio which is the the thing i must i more recognized in i probably it was more um studying and applying it by myself and and like i said visiting some mentors and learning from some mentors who are those mentors uh, which mentors? Yeah, which, which um, cool guys. Yeah, Ramon Gomez Meda was uh, one one of uh, the, the the most uh, well known mentors I had. I had um, a, a very important mentor, which is here in Portugal. He's uh, he's very well known as well. He's uh, Jorge André Cardoso. He's okay, one of yeah, the most there. famous uh, doctors in in Portugal and also very recognized uh, worldwide. Um, he was he was uh, probably the mentor because he he taught me how to think the patient has a whole as mm -hmm. a whole he, he he put the multidisciplinary thinking in my veins for sure and uh, I'm, I'm very thankful to him to opening my my mind and uh, and then I could do my own path This is the studio mm -hmm. where we uh, do all the photo documentation, video documentation of the patient, especially for uh, planning the clinical work. Mm -hmm. You have Canon or Nikon? Because I see you do Nikon. Uh, no, this one, this one is for Canon, for a Canon uh, camera, but I use Nikon. Mm -hmm. yeah. For intro or photos is uh, Nikon. Mm -hmm. Your piece of cut cam? Yeah. <laughs> this is our cut cam work. This is the milling machine. Show the guys your uh, implant stock. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, yeah, come here. Um, depends on which brand will pay more. I can show one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the implant stock. We want to be sure that we have the right implant, right size, right diameter at the surgery. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, a nice. prosthetic component, so it's uh, surgical kits. It's, it's a lot of... One of the things the doctor like in our clinic is that... Everything for sure, is structured. And for sure, there's not going to miss any, any type yeah. of material. We have everything for everything, for every situation. Cool. This is the CACAM part. This is the part where we... Where you plan. Where we plan, plan and do um, our CACAM work. You do mostly guided or not guided? Freehand? Uh, I do 
some, what do you prefer? I do some uh, guided surgery, but for specific cases. I don't think that simple cases, very simple, mm -hmm. straightforward cases, especially one unit cases, that there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of advantages in going guided and for because the the amount of time and effort you have to put before the surgery is too much. Uh, I use it more for multiple cases with post extraction implants, cases in which your uh, your hand is not is, is it needs to be guided because you have some uh, uh, the predictability of the final position of the implant mm. according to the prosthetics might not be the same. So the larger the number of implants and especially with uh, immediate implants involved, yeah. It leads me to go to guided, but if you are going to do uh, most of your cases guided, a lot of times you, you, the, the, the timing of your response to mm -hmm. the patients takes longer sure. because you have to sure. do everything guided. So and it's, for uh, those big cases, you plan yourself or you have outsourced? No, no, no. I, I, I do the planning, I do the planning, but then I have uh, a team involved, lab technician, mm -hmm. uh, uh, dental technician to do the, the guided part. So you I, plan where? Sorry. What, what software you? Use? Uh, Blue Sky Bio, Blue Sky Bio. Uh, and and then we use different softwares to uh, to design the guys. Yeah, uh, like the, the, yeah. Three shape exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like <laughs> so here we have uh, other offices. This is one of the offices, and. Uh, these two offices here are linked by this uh, sterilization room. Mm -hmm. This is the office that was uh, working in the morning. You, you haven't saw. I have two uh, implant implant motors because we never know. Um, <laughs> so, yes, so people place implants here, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'm not the only one placing implants in my clinic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have big flow. Yeah. And the lab this way? No, the lab is here. No. This is the main part of our lab. Here we've done mainly the acrylics mm -hmm. and the ceramics is in another room. Acrylics, you mean? Uh, uh, temporaries, mm -hmm. removable prosthesis. Uh, if, you, if you have a temporary bridge broken or something, yeah. Hybrid dentures. Yeah. A lot of people ask, why don't you do no, surgery with the microscope? No, no. Obvious. <laughs> Obvious. Yeah, and it's pretty much it. Oh, in the um, in the relaxing room oh, for the patient. Sense. This way? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Yeah. So just read books. So when you need to do your all on four, you can rest there after the surgery. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. I love it. I love it. Uh, so that's um we haven't seen your oh sorry so after office. after the um, the the first appointment if if uh, if it's a first appointment or if we need to talk about money with the patient mm -hmm. it's done here so we call have, the money room yeah i have one one person fully dedicated to that mm -hmm. to uh, manage all the financial part of the treatments also to advise the patient to help the patient with that part we try to separate fully separate nowadays the financial part of the treatment uh, from the doctors and try not the doctors to have him, have them involved on that. So it's it's uh, the Do you do area. some kind of a presentation of treatment, or you do just like on a paperwork? How it works? I uh, we deliver the patient uh, so every step of the treatment written. Uh, and then here, uh, the person who is here is already trained by me with uh, case scenarios, mm -hmm. different case scenarios. So they explain the patient, everything that was diagnosed by the doctor, but also we have uh, types of cases like that are similar, similar and they say, okay, your case is similar to this one. So you can uh, look at this case like yours. 
in this patient was treated here look how we treated you're going to do the same how do you still try to combine both doing lecturing everywhere it's working not, here it's not working easy there. It's not easy, and it's not easy. Managing everything. <laughs> it's not easy. One of the things is not accepting everything. I've been invited to, so you can consider yourself privileged. <laughs> but uh, it's true. Nowadays, it's it's so many things from, yeah, I had to, I had to select. I have to uh, organize myself. I have to combine with my personal life, which is very important to me. Um, I have two kids, two small kids. So it's very important for, for me to have time for them. And, uh, and the clinic is, is, is a daughter to me as well. So mm. I, have to, I have to have all these things together. But it's not easy, it's not easy. Uh, I, I don't want to be a, sp a full-time speaker as a lot of people uh, that we, we see around because I'm, I'm really, really happy at the office doing my clinical I cases. I like to be constantly developing my technical part. I, love, I have lots of cases because of that and that, um, that huge uh, set of clinical cases, different cases, defying cases, deal with people, do with all, deal with all of those challenges day by day is what really gets me passionate about dentistry. And um, lecturing being only a part of my life is very is very is something i'm really passionate about because i can show to other colleagues what i'm doing at the moment if i'm always lecturing and i don't practice on my own routine i'm always showing the same things i'm not developing i'm not doing nothing new i'm not teaching nothing new to, on those courses so i like the courses to be an extension of my mm -hmm. clinical work I run different courses, of course, but uh, if we focus on uh, perigoprostal uh, courses for FP1 concept, it's going to be um, precisely about this perigoprostal um, joint uh, work that we can do on uh, soft tissue augmentation around implants and pontic sites, so rebuilding the natural soft tissue architecture for uh, implant rehabilitation, and then also the, the pontic site, the emergence profile management with the prosthesis and how we can do the, that joint work together. Um, that, can, that will be um, much, much easier to do in a single unit case or uh, small bridges, but we will do um, everything from small bridges to full arch bridges with FP1 concept. Uh, so we will do not only surgical techniques for soft tissue augmentation, different techniques, different approaches according to different situations, but also the different ways to manage the emergency profiles because it can be done in very different ways according to the different situations that we might have and um, we will run all that part. And it's very clarifying when we see it uh, in a hands-on because of course a hands-on on soft tissue augmentation in my point of view is, is, is not enough because we can learn techniques to augment the, the gingiva and I know a lot of surgeons that are very good mastering soft tissue uh, procedures but then they don't know what to do with that soft tissue with the prosthetic part and uh, hands-on on, on emergence profiles is very is very rare is, is, is you don't see it very often I, I don't know much courses that do uh, courses about uh, hands-on about emergence profiles and um, I, I'm conducting more and more nowadays uh, hands-on and prosthetic part where people learn how to shape the right emergence profile in each situation in a pontic site in an implant site if we have how to, how to go from a non-conditioned ridge to a conditioned ridge with the perfect emergence profiles. So uh, here's the case of um, a very complex anterior aesthetics. You can see this patient with um, several issues at the same time on the aesthetic zone. Um, the patient came to my office uh, mainly because of the tooth 22. So tooth 22 had an history of a failing implant twice, a failed bone graft as well. Um, and she experienced because of that a severe vertical and horizontal bone loss and of course you can see that there's missing a lot of soft tissue in the interior zone especially around the, this tooth 22 
um, so she was um, she wasn't happy because of uh, not having the fixed tooth and also because of the aesthetics because the amount of soft tissues she lost during the process uh, you can see at the same time that there's a, a lot of over treatment on the on the other tooth on the other teeth of the anterior area you can see a um, lot of composites uh, with the leakage uh, a lot of over treatment and um, uh, you can see infiltrations and over contouring of the composites so um, what I thought right away is that maybe uh, there was no sense in trying to rebuild the bone and place an implant on element 22 if the um, patient was experiencing so, uh, so many issues on the other teeth because to restore correctly the other teeth we will probably uh, needing uh, to do some 360 uh, prosthesis on those teeth so probably a bridge will be the best treatment possible for um, the whole set of the anterior area. That's what I propose to the patient uh, to reconstruct the soft tissue around 22, um, create harmony and symmetry on the, on the pink and the white proportions of the rehabilitation, especially the pink will require crown lengthening on the first quadrant and uh, soft tissue reconstruction on the left side uh, in order to get the proper balance uh, between the pink and white um, and the teeth will be restored with the bridge uh, in this way we, it will not be needed it will make no sense and, and specifically put an implant on, on the area of 22. So this is the planning um, throughout the case so it's very important to understand uh, the general view of, of all this philosophy because uh, treating only that area of the 22 we will never have a proper balance proper symmetry uh, for, for a beautiful aesthetic so we have to think uh, in a general view and of course the crown lengthening will play uh, and uh, has an important role an important role, role has important has the soft tissue grafting uh, on the on the left side of the patient so you can see in the first surgery we had already a stent to guide us uh, through the um, apical reposition of the soft and hard tissue on the, on the right side of the patient. So this stent uh, allows us to uh, do the gingivectomy, but also after a full thickness flap to assess the bone and realize where the bone should be replaced, should be remodeled uh, apically. So the uh, osteotomy uh, puts the, the, the bone three millimeters away from this area. Re remember that this tooth, this teeth, uh, had no longer enamel so you cannot recognize an enamel cementum uh, junction so it's very important to have a stent that can mark specifically where the future margin of the restoration will be so you can uh, trim the bone uh, three millimeters apically of that mark on the left side in the same surgery we are performing a coronal advanced flap so this is a modified coronal vans flap with no releasing incisions it's very important to know how to release the buccal flap so it can advance tension free without any type of tension of the muscles without any type of movement at the end of the surgery so you can release it um, with this dissection and then the flap will passively advance um, on, on the area that, that is going to be reconstructed so uh, you can see the soft tissue graft after harvesting of the, of the pellet, after disapitalization, you can see the thick lamina proper of the graft being sutured. The first graft is an occlusal graft and the second graft is a buccal graft. So you can see two different grafts for an horizontal and vertical uh, component of the reconstruction. And this is pretty much uh, the concept of platform technique proposed by Zucchelli in 2012, um, where he was uh, ensuring to have uh, a split thickness periosteum on the occlusal part of the, of, of the pontic site in order to be able to stabilize the grafts on that area. So we are doing pretty much the same here with a slight variation on the incisional, incision design. And now after advancement of the flap, the closure allows us to passive 
submerged in first intention healing um, the, the coronal vents flap. So uh, now we have uh, the teeth were previously uh, treated by endo and by build up with a, with a rubber dam isolation and I could do the, the surgery in a very clean way um, already on those build ups. So this is the healing on the first phase. Uh, the patient has not the best hygiene, um, but you can uh, observe how we augmented a lot the soft tissue around uh, 12 and now we have the zenith margins of, of the whole set of teeth. They are balanced, they are uh, in the same harmony and we just need to boost a little bit more the papilla area around 22 and it will require a second graft, a second surgery because in the, with the first surgery we augmented enough in an horizontal or vertical way in order to meet the zenith point but if we need to get the proper papilla we will need to overgraft occlusally in order to then uh, shape and recondition the tissue in order to uh, recreate the papilla um, form and shape. So on the second surgery we are doing a tunneling technique. It is basically a pouch technique uh, with this access with microblades. We are creating a passive tunnel in order to uh, be able to uh, lift the, um, the area to be augmented by a new uh, graft uh, without moving the papilla area um, like it was in the first in the first technique so this is the second graft we are going to place it, the graft in this position I always test my grafts on top of the flap uh, in order to understand if the shape if the design if the the area to be covered is what we intended to do at the, at the beginning of the surgery and then through sutures we are able to introduce the graft uh, to its place and now you can see here um, the, the, the healing of the, um, this tunnel. This is immediately after surgery and after three months we have already um, the enough soft tissue contour in order to reshape the pontic side. So you can see now we have enough horizontal soft tissue, enough vertical soft tissue and now the vertical excess soft, soft tissue was enough for us to play around with the papillas. So the second set of, of provisionals is mandatory at, the, at this stage, otherwise the first set of, of uh, provisionals is already um, not in the perfect condition, so the C new set of provisionals in PMMA uh, is going to do the final refinement of, uh, of the soft tissue contour, not only on the, on the prep teeth but also on the pontic side and you need time. You need time for the tissue to maturate. The bigger the area to be reconstructed, the bigger the, the soft tissue grafts, the longer you need time to wait to be sure that the tissues are stable and to reach um, a, um, a constant stabilization point in which you are comfortable to communicate with the lab technician for the final teeth. You can use this PMMA trying to be remodeled with composite. I, I do it a lot in order to communicate the shapes and with an intraoral scanner you can easily communicate the final shape of the, of the bridge um, by after the remodeling of, of your train. So you can see um, the, the healing of the soft tissue after uh, the maturation of the soft tissue around this new set of provisionals. Now you can see um, that this, this uh, prep teed were prep under the BOPT concept so uh, you have no finishing line, you can boost the, the soft tissue thickening only by uh, changing your preparation concept and again on the, um, on the Pontex side the tissue is uh, beautifully sculpted in order to meet the expectations we had at the beginning of the treatment and you can also if you um, take a closer look at, um, at the two central incisors you can understand that this patient has a shifted maxilla so the maxilla was shifted to the right side which means that we needed 
to uh, I'm sorry to the left side of the patient so we needed to boost a little bit more the soft tissue augmentation horizontally on 21 and 22 in order to have the new set of teeth perfectly aligned with the, with the middle line. So the tissue maturation after this new set of provisionals in a frontal view and now we have the tissue sculpted in the perfect way to receive uh, the definitive bridge, bridge that will be in zirconia layer with, with ceramic. So at this point we pretty much are in conditions to do the final impression uh, and use uh, the um, uh, STL files from our intraoral scanning that we took from the um, second um, uh, provisionals in order to copy the shapes, not only the primary shapes of the buckle view, but also the pontic side design that we have on 22, and that can be copied to the definitive bridge in Zirconi. This is the image of the trine of that bridge, and the moment of sitting the final teeth on this newly formed emergence profile. So you can see how we balance not only uh, the zenith of the whole set of teeth but also the amount of soft tissue that we created uh, around 22 in order to create uh, the same size of papilla that we have on the contralateral side which is very difficult to do if we don't have you don't have a teeth a tooth and also if you have lost a lot of volume uh, on the hard uh, tissues as well because the loss of the interproximal bone peaks will cost us also the loss of papilla that was what we had at the beginning so uh, um, lateral view uh, so you can see and observe the emergence profile on the, um, around the, the, the bridge mimicking what happens in natural dentition and you can see a follow-up after eight months uh, you can see how stable it gets during time and it can only improve the quality of soft tissues always improving with time and you can uh, compare where we started and where we get, at what point we, we, we could get uh, and you can understand that um, the success of this result is not only relying on the augmentation of soft tissue at the left side of the patient but also the crown lengthening on the right side was crucial for us to understand how we could meet this balance at the end of the treatment. This is the impact on patient smile and this is the typical perioprostal thinking um, from the beginning with the planning and then with the execution where perio and prosto must be uh, in a perfect symbiosis to uh, be able to deliver us this kind of results. How did you got into such a perfect surgical experience what you're doing right now? How did you start and what brought you to the such levels that you have right now? Uh, well, first, thank you for considering it perfect or almost yeah, perfect. That's true. Uh, I, I tend to recognize that perfection is something that we never achieve, but we are constantly battling for it. And uh, the, the most thrilling part of our work, I think, it's, is that constant pursuit of, uh, of perfection. Well, my, my uh, development on the, on, on the surgical area and especially this perioprostal field that I'm, I'm mainly focused nowadays, uh, I do a little bit of everything including aesthetic rehabilitation, uh, implants, bone graft, but uh, where I think that um, my, my favorite part of the day is actually when I do into mucogingival surgery with with a, a perioprostal thinking because I cannot think and um, to answer your question directly but also um, explaining that uh, we can uh, part of the, the success of my cases is, is is precisely by joining the peri and prosto on the same concept and on the same treatment uh, although I think that um, uh, we, we nowadays the modern uh, dentistry lives in a multidisciplinary environment and uh, my team as well we are, they, we are divided into disciplines but the peri and the prosto I cannot separate for me it's a one joint discipline and um, you, you, you saw me at work and you, you saw me uh, dealing with the cases doing 
at the same moment peri and prostol. Sure. Every step of prostol needs a, another step of surgery and sometimes even during the surgery I can change, I need to change the shape of my provisionals. I need to sometimes close my flaps after sitting the provisionals. So a lot of, uh, a lot of prostol thinking behind the surgery and during the surgery. So uh, we can uh, have two different people doing the same, these things but both have to be in the surgery, both have to be in the different steps of the treatment or in, in the ideal world both are the same person which yeah. is my case. So um, for me, it's a, it's a game changing in, in, in my development as a, as a clinician. When I started to realize that both at the same time needed to be so, uh, so perfectly close together in order to deliver these kind of results. And uh, well, I started, I started by implants. Uh, my, my first training was in, in implants. And very soon, very, very quickly, I realized that I needed to take care of the soft tissues. I needed the periodontology basis behind the implants to be successful, not only because of the aesthetics, but also because of the longevity of the implants. So I started studying more and more um, periodontology. And, um, and, and so I, I, th I think I did a lot of, uh, uh, a, a thing, a, a lot of um, uh, learning all by myself and also by drinking a lot of knowledge by, mm -hmm. by some mentors. I had some mentors uh, throughout Europe that I, I, I'm really thankful for, like Ramon, Ramon Gomez Meda, for example. He was one of the, my main mentors. When I knew his work, I was blown away. It was like, okay, this is, this is a better version of me. Like, I, I will learn from him. So I know I, this guy does even ortho, right? Yes, he's, he's, uh, he's an alien, actually. He's not, he's not human, he's not human. So, <laughs> but yes, my, uh, my development was, uh, was like that, step by step. And also the best course that we can have for ourselves is, is documentation and our own documentation, if we have time, if we are strict, precise, and we, uh, we are constant in our documentation and we self-evaluate constantly our own documentation, we learn and grow a lot. So the lab is basically divided in three parts, uh -huh. the acrylics, the carcam, and this is the ceramic part. So here is a, is a way to separate, fully separate the ceramic work um, from the rest of the lab. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, these are printing uh, machines. This is the curing after printing. Uh, this is um, the hole for the ceramic for sintering. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, pretty much. So you mainly do press. Yeah, but we we it's it's not. I mean, if it's outdoors, then okay, meal or press or. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's it's not. Um, we don't do a lot of ceramic here because of what I told you. Yeah. How many square meters is the clinic? Okay. Almost four hundred. Okay. That's yeah, huge. almost four hundred. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of one of the difficulties nowadays is to find to find a. A new location. It was very. We wanted to buy a place, mm -hmm. even though buying a place in downtown Porto to be in the same location to be one million euros, for sure. And this place is is uh, is <coughs> rented. Uh, is in, rented. Is rented. You yeah. cannot buy it. No, we wanted we wanted to buy because of course one of the things that that are making us leaving is also because they are changing the rules of the shopping mall and we want to get okay. rid of it. But uh, buying a place, uh, it will be one million euros minimum okay. and we uh, were willing we were willing to do so yeah. but uh, you don't find a lot of businesses to no. do in downtown especially with this uh with this extension mm -hmm. of area because it's too much we saw a lot of um, situations but we couldn't make any so we are moving to another rented place okay. which is a which is a pain in the ass oh thank you a lot no I'm my, pleasure. I'm happy. my pleasure my pleasure no. I would like to thank you for finishing watching the video. It's been a first English-speaking episode from Dentalix. We still keep moving. We 
keep traveling around the world. We're gonna take many interviews from famous dentists, surgeons, prosthodontists, orthodontists, and other professionals. So that's not the last video and still many coming. I would like to thank you again and stay with Dentalix. Thank you a lot.